Okay, third time's the charm. This time I won't put my hand over the microphone. Uh, this is my done-ish Pycade mini build from the Pycade Kickstarter from, you know, a couple years ago. Uh, I finally got the whole thing together and up and running, and uh, you can see my blog uh, for the, you know, step-by-steps I put the whole thing together. It's basically a wood cabinet with the joystick controls here. Uh, you got an LCD screen. Um, these are not, these are some of the buttons that they came with the kit. They, it came with enough buttons, but they were just kind of two of every color, and I went ahead and, and decided I didn't want that, and I wanted a different ball on the joystick, so I changed them out with parts that I had. But it, it comes with enough buttons. You have the six on the top, you've got two front buttons, and you have a, a button on each side. Um, and then yeah, you have your speaker grills over here. You've got the marquee, um, and uh, uh, design under the, the control panel here. And those are there's three different ones that it comes with, and you can get the, the schematics if you want to make your own. I just I picked the one that I thought was the most neutral. Uh, if you can imagine, this is being the most neutral one. Um, yeah, this is pretty much what the, the kit comes with. It, it's the 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 screen. It, it basically comes with everything but the brain for the machine itself. Uh, you have this keys, and we'll see inside there's a, a single board that basically turns button presses into keyboard input, uh, like a USB keyboard, so you can put whatever PC you want in there, and you can reprogram exactly what keys, you know, these buttons are sending, and away you go, and that works with pretty much everything, way simpler than setting up, uh, you know, actual joystick drivers or anything. Um, you can see everything's kind of put together with these, uh, wood panels, kind of like jigsaw, like, pieces, and it's all being held together with these, uh, you know, these Allen wrench-based bolts. And it works pretty well, it's pretty sturdy, you've got a nice, uh, handle here on the top. Uh, I took it to work today in the rain, uh, no problems. Um, a little heavy, but you can sit on your lap and play, and it works just fine. Um, so here's the back. Uh, So, the, as the kit came, this was just, a, you know, the board with the, I mean, they had the nice Space Invaders holes cut in it, and, uh, um, but this was all flush down here, and the idea is that, you know, you have your computer mounted inside, and if you need anything to run out externally, you would run cables out here, and you'd have a couple power supplies, you know, one for the monitor, one for the PC, uh, USB, you know, for your, your, your keyboard, all that stuff, and I decided that, uh, I didn't want that. Uh, the, uh, it's powered by a Raspberry Pi, and Raspberry Pis aren't the most, uh, uh, the ports aren't super stable on them. I find that they flex a little too much, and I don't want anything getting damaged by being pulled out. So I built this. This is from a, uh, the panel, uh, this is a light switch panel blank that I cut out and mounted these jacks. So I have an Ethernet, a couple USB, a uh, single power jack, and a single power switch. And I'll show how that's wired. Well, the inside, so that everything's powered as one switch from, you know, to get to get to gaming. Um, all right, and uh, let's get some better lighting and uh, open this thing up. Okay. Now let's uh, get a flashlight ready. We'll go ahead and open this up inside and, and see what it looks like. Uh, so it's a little bit of rat's nest, but walk through this, um, I'll probably clean it up later. Uh, you can see on the inside, these are the little, the little white kind of corner blocks that are used to hold everything together with the uh, Allen wrench bolts. Um, we've got stereo speakers. This is the driver board for the uh, monitor, you know, HDMI, uh, VGA, and composite in, and power. Uh, and here's the control panel for the actual monitor if you want to change inputs and stuff like that, but you don't need to do that anymore. Um, white, okay. So, we look underneath here. A lot of wires, all the stuff from the buttons. A little bit of a mess, but basically what we have here, let's see if I can get this closer. Uh, so we have this purple panel in there, that is the Pycade control board, all these green connectors there for all the individual buttons and for the speakers and everything. Uh, you can see right here, uh, we've got two jacks, we've got the USB 
uh, essentially the, the Pi Cade acts as a uh, a USB keyboard. Every button press on the on the joystick sends a key to whatever computer you use. Um, it's great for compatibility and really easy code, um, and seems to work out pretty well. Uh, we also got the uh, audio jack in, and there's also a headphone jack I'm not using at the moment. At some point, I might decide to install a uh, a headphone jack, but uh, I don't. It, it's not. I mean, the joystick is pretty loud by itself, so uh, having headphones isn't that great of a you know a way of being able to play privately because uh, everybody can hear you playing anyway. Uh, anyway, so this is basically everything you get with the kit. The kit has all the this side of the electronics in here, um, and what's left is really for you to do the act, whatever PC, whatever you want to fit in here. You can see there's. A, 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 I mean, there's a fair amount of space here in the cabinet. It's kind of hard angle to see, um, but uh, there's there's plenty of room to uh, uh, to, to put things in here. Uh, and the idea is to mount stuff here on the uh, on this rear panel. So take a quick look at this. Um, so here I have a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's a Model B with the 512 megs of RAM, and I think it's 700 megahertz. I don't remember, but it's uh, an overclocked, and I got a 32 gig SD card for the memory uh, or for storage. Uh, and what you can see here is on the back of that that panel jack I, I showed before. Uh, here are our plugs, and this is just a you know again this was just to my way of uh, of making sure that. Uh, I wasn't putting too much strain on these jacks because I've had problems with these, especially the HDMI of, of all things, uh, with other builds of Raspberry Pi stuff where you wiggle something and you lose connections and it's a pain in the ass. Um, so we got the HDMI going into the Raspberry Pi. We've got this is an audio cable. It's kind of really people have complained this really close to the speaker here, so I put in a. Uh, I've got one of these little extendy. Uh, Audio cables from Mono Price because everything I can I get from Mono Price, um, uh, and so this is is nice. The, the audio cable that came with the kit uh, is kind of a, kind of a thick plug on it and would hit this uh, and cause problems uh, if your Raspberry Pi was mounted where they recommended you to, where they put the the mounting holes for. Um, so I, I got this and this works fine. Uh, and you see we've got the US, we've got sorry we have Ethernet here. Plug into the Ethernet uh, port or, or jack, um, and then of the two USB, I put the one USB cable uh, connected to this this cheap USB hub. And what I've done here is I don't want what, I, what I've got here is I don't want to uh, or I didn't want to draw all the power through the Raspberry Pi to power whatever I plug into it. Now, yeah, sure, the USB is only plugging into a simulated USB keyboard, and I have two USB jacks here for, you know, at most another keyboard or a controller, so not a lot of power draw. Yeah, I'm not going to be charging my phone off of it or anything, but um, I decided that uh, it's it was still not what I wanted to, to do, it to do, and so I uh, I basically went inside the leads in here pop this thing open, cut the power leads for the USB hub uh, from the main wire, and then I went ahead and, and just routed in new power lines. Uh, and these wires go straight to the back of the, uh, uh, the switch back here on the bottom part. So it's a, it's a single throw double pole switch. And so the bottom part of the switch is powering both the USB hub and the uh, the monitor, so when you hit the power, those things go on right away. Um, and connected to the USB hub, obviously we have the two jacks, and then we have the one USB plug that's over here that's actually going to the, the PiCade uh, board. Okay, so so that's that that was that was that's pretty straightforward. Now the, the real thing, the real customization, other than the jack panel itself, was uh, the power. It's a known kind of problem with Raspberry Pi is that uh, if you cut the power to it, because there's no power switch, the only way you can really do is cut the power, and you cut the power, that corrupts the SD card. I've gone through that so many times, and it's a pain to have to keep taking the SD card, running disk check on it, 
hoping that your config files stuff haven't been corrupted, reflashing SD cards. It's a pain, and it's not something I want to deal with every time I have to turn it off. Uh, you know, if you don't do a clean shutdown, right? It's no way a, a consumer-friendly way uh, to do things. So, what I have here, and there's, so there's plenty of solutions to this problem. It's a known issue. Uh, I have right here, this is a, uh, it's from Mouseberry Circuits. And essentially what we have is uh, a way to do clean shutdown. So, like I said, we have a double pole switch down here. The top pole, black and white wire there, those are coming into the, the to the uh, Mouseberry circuit. And then we have a power line coming in, which is a hacked USB cable. It's just getting powered straight from the jack, not through the switch. Um, and then the power going out is going to the Raspberry Pi as usual. And then we've got these two, this green and blue wire is basically going to the, the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi uh, and to the circuit. So what the circuit does is when the power turns on uh, and the switch is, is turned on, um, sorry, so when you plug in the power jack, nothing happens, right? It doesn't power the Raspberry Pi. When you hit the switch, uh, the, 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 it lets the, the power go through into the Raspberry Pi and it starts up fine. There's a script running on the Raspberry Pi that, uh, sets one of these pins to high or whatever to let the circuit know that there's a Raspberry Pi currently on uh, and uh, uh, consuming power. What happens is when I cut power to the switch, one pole cuts power to the USB and the monitor, and the other pole tells this circuit to, hey, you know, turn off. So it sends a signal to the Raspberry Pi. The script that's running hits, hears that, uh, and then executes a clean shutdown. Uh, when the shutdown occurs, obviously the script stops running. Now when the script's not running, the little circuit here recognizes like, oh, okay, there's no longer a computer that needs power and it cuts power completely. Um, it takes a couple seconds. Uh, the speakers pop uh, when it happens. So it's kind of, uh, uh, it, it, it's obvious that power has been cut for real and not, it's safe to unplug things. Um, and I've done it a, a couple dozen times now and had no issues with, with SD card corruption. Uh, it's really great. I'm probably going to buy more of these for future Raspberry Pi projects. Um, and it's nice that I could put my own switch in there, so I just have the one switch. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Uh, uh, why, why am I connecting the USB to the hub and not directly to the Raspberry Pi for the, the Pi Cade board here? I mean, like, it's only one thing. Right, like without without the USB jacks, why not just plug the the Pi Cade uh, controller directly into Raspberry Pi? And the problem I found was it there was some issues where if you're powering directly from here, and because the sound's also going through, I don't know if it's shorting or something, but basically the sound goes loud, and that kills the controls. The the, the controller board stops working. It's too loud of a sound goes through. I don't know why it does it. I, I don't even think the sound's being processed by the board, so I have no idea what's happening but other people have had the problem too uh, but I found when I put it on the separate power when it's not being uh, when the thing is not actually uh, the PiKey controller is being powered by the USB hub and it's independent of you know it's just the data lines being connected to the Raspberry Pi uh, then it works just fine uh, you know there are loud sounds and, and the controls don't die um, but yeah that's basically with the inside, look, there's still room in here. Um, and closes up pretty nicely. I'll probably connect these at some point so they're not just dangling around. Because uh, it gets, gets a little annoying to open and close the door. Especially this HDMI cable gets in the way all the time. Um, Alright, so let me close this up and we'll uh, start this thing up and see what the uh, hardware looks like. Or sorry, the software looks like on the uh, with it running. Alright, so... Got my power supply over here. This is just a uh, uh, three amps, five volts. Um, got it from uh, Jimenko, I think. Uh, it was I, I got tired of trying to find a high amp mini uh, or micro USB charger, uh, and I'm I'm so glad that I just went and got a a, a real wall wart here. Um, it's nice and slim. Uh, and uh, so let's. Uh, Plug this in, and we'll 
turn this guy around. Actually, let's turn it so that it's not going to get a glare too much. Okay. So, move back here, turn on the power, and see how long it takes to uh, start up. It's, I mean, it's a PC, it takes a little time, but uh, it's not that bad. So, okay. Zoom it up. So, I'm using the uh, RetroPie project. Uh, I've used it in the past, and I found that, you know, save myself some time. Uh, it's set up, and I already had one that was set up with Xbox controllers and hooked with the TV and worked pretty well. Uh, so I went ahead and just cloned that SD card and, and worked from there. Uh, made my life a lot easier to have already played with this stuff before. The, out of the box, it, it pretty much works. Uh, you heard the speakers pop there. Uh, so here's... Here, it launches into this app emulation station, which lets you uh, switch through. Different. Uh, emulators or apps. Uh, in my case, I, I disabled all the, you know, Duke Nukem and Doom and all that stuff. I don't care about those. I, I just want retro games, you know, retro console games on here. Uh, pretty much everything works. Uh, the only ones I've had issues with is uh, Genesis only does three buttons for some reason. Uh, and there's, there's potentially, I haven't updated the, 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 the distribution on here in at least a couple months. So it's possible I just need to connect to the internet and run an update. Uh, all the Nintendo stuff seems to work fine. Nintendo Super Nintendo. Um, uh, Master System. Most of the games don't load right. I haven't figured out why yet. Uh, MAME. None of them seem to load. I think I have the wrong version of all the ROMs. Um, but it, it's pretty nice. Like, it's not the, like, you know, this defaulting is not the the, the, the coolest. Inter I mean, it, it's straightforward and to the point. I mean, it doesn't have all the crazy box art and all that stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, okay. Now the only other thing is, we'll listen to this in a second, uh, the one like remaining hardware issue that I, I'm still fighting is, for some reason when this thing boots up, it's on max volume. Uh, and so when I start selecting games, uh, that is really loud and really obnoxious. And it's even worse when you start playing a game. So, uh, uh, what I, the workaround that I've found is, you know, I, I bring up the the menu here, go into you know, this shutdown, all these different things all work. Um, so I go into settings here, and if we zoom in, yeah, so I go here, and uh, let's get a, a decent volume, like, like this is like a regular normal hearing volume, um, and uh, works I'll put it back there. Works really well. Like, I don't have to change it, just going in and out of here for some reason. Actually fixes it. Now you can hear it's kind of a nice, you know, a nice little click. Um, so, now obviously I have everything that I can on here. Uh, so, nice to be able to scroll through really quickly. Um, like I said, six buttons aren't working on the Genesis emulator, but... That's okay, because the game that I'm going to show, you know, if you're going to show a game for Genesis Emulator, there's only one real choice. Good old Sonic the Hedgehog. So. And, yeah, I mean, that's, that's all, I mean, that's all there really is. To it. Like the Genesis works great. I'm going to start here and you know, I've got my controls. And if you go through my, my, my blog uh, blog posts where I you know build this whole thing, I have my configs all saved up there so you can use my exact configs if you want to um, and save yourself some configuration if you decide to use RetroPie. I know most people are using Pi Mame. I really do want to get arcade games. I would love to be able to play Pac Man on this, an actual arcade Pac Man. But in the meantime, I will just, you know. I will live with playing, you know, all the uh, home console games. Um, and so, yeah, this is, I think this is Pico Drive is the actual emulator, but, you know. Oh, well, I lasted for 21 seconds playing Sonic one-handed, trying to balance the camera. Uh, now, there's other things, so I, I set this 
button down here for menu control stuff. This is all part of RetroArc and RetroPie. Um, but basically I can do this to do, uh, I think this is volume control. So, it's knowing that also happens, but actually let me pause it. I don't want to hear the volume. Okay. So you see a little down there at the bottom, the, uh, you know. So I can adjust the volume in game. Uh, I also have save states and load states, which I don't think Pico Drive works. If I do save state, yeah, failed to save state. Uh, and I also can bring up the emulator menu, which gives you all the options. By default, I have everything configured to be as full screen as possible. And as you can see, uh, you know, there's a tiny bit of a lip because it's not, you know, a perfect matter. I don't want any, you know, rescaling. You know, I want the exact aspect ratio, but that's, that's pretty much all of the screen being used for a Sega game. Um, and, uh, all right, so let me just, uh, I use the two outside buttons to uh, exit out of the emulator. So let me do that really quick. Um, so that exits out of the emulator. Um, it's a little annoying that it doesn't keep track, like, uh, I mean, th there's a way where you can, like, jump by letter in the emulation station, but I found that it doesn't really work well. I don't get how it sorts. It's not sorting by letter. It sorts by something else. It's really annoying. Um, you know, Super Nintendo works, obviously, uh, you know, for a time we didn't know what, what the mini controls were going to look like. They say at least four buttons, but we have six. And of course, it's in a perfect uh, Street Fighter layout. So, since I can't get six buttons to work on Genesis, um, I'll have to live with uh, using six buttons on Street Fighter on Super Nintendo. So. Out. I can play Street Fighter better than I played Sonic one-handed, but um, yeah, Super Nintendo obviously. Or maybe, I don't know if Super Nintendo is just this game. I never had a Super Nintendo, so I don't know whether or not why it's losing using less screen. But oh, not bad. Come on, if I win one-handed. Shows how much of my childhood I wasted on this game. Nope. I don't think it's gonna happen. Nope, not gonna happen. Alright, yeah, so I got the same stuff. I can exit out here. And, uh,. Yeah, I mean, that the, the, my main goals of this thing are pretty much set. I have one switch to turn it on, one switch to turn it off. I don't, at this point, really need to plug in a keyboard to debug anything. Um, during regular gameplay, I haven't run into any issues where I've had to stop playing a game to, to configure stuff. Everything's available from the keys that I have, um, and all the configs that I've used are connected to my blog. Um, so I know a lot of people are still waiting to get their their Kickstarter stuff, I was lucky enough to get mine pretty early. I, I don't remember what tier I was in, but obviously um, I got mine shipped in and, you know, uh, barring some, some minor build quality issues in terms of pieces not fitting together right, uh, for the most part, it's it came with everything that, you know, that I could ask for. I mean, I would have liked if it was Pi, you know, Raspberry Pi specific and all I had to, you know, they had a distribution ready to go and I just plug in a computer and, and ran it, but it was also fun to uh, customize it a little bit because, you know, uh, you don't take it apart and change it around yourself, then, you know, what's the point? Um, yeah, and uh, I think that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed. Check out the blog to see the step-by-step -step photos of me putting it together and uh, config files and, you know, my complaints about, you know, some stuff I've probably forgotten now, but in terms of putting this, you know, problems I had putting this thing together, and the Pimeroni guys, you know, uh, coming to my rescue and listening to my feedback, and I hope you enjoyed. Nice game.
being shut down.